Hey guys, welcome to Everyday Guitarist, where we demo everyday gear for everyday guitarists. Today we're going to be talking about how I go about getting pop punk tone. First of all guys, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, I'd really appreciate it. Hit the bell notification and uh, the subscribe button and that just helps me to continue doing these videos. So today we're going to be talking about a bunch of gear, uh, because I'm going to kind of show you how I go about getting pop punk tones. So there's a couple of really essential things you need uh, for getting these kind of tones. So I'm going to just really quickly run through all of the gear I'm going to use today, uh, and then I'll explain kind of as I go uh, why I'm using those things. So today we're going to be using this, the uh, Sick As Overdrive by Bondi FX. It's an awesome uh, kind of Klon style overdrive does a lot of really fantastic things, uh, and I'll show you what that's used for later. I'm going to be using this Ventera Thin Line Telecaster uh, with the wide range humbuckers in it. Super good guitar, I love it, sounds awesome. Other things I'll be using are uh, the Torpedo Live using a uh, Mesa uh, oversized recto cab with Vintage 30s and my orange TH30 on the Dirty channel. Later in the produced track, you'll hear a little bit of delay coming from the Walrus Audio D1 and some chorusing effect from a Strymon uh, Deco. So we're gonna start with the amp here. It's the orange TH30, I love it, it's a really good amp. I have it on the Dirty channel, and this is how I start to get my tone and start to kind of shape things. So I'm gonna start with the gain as low as possible, and as you can hear, there's no sound. That's how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a big chord and I'm going to start turning the gain up until it starts to actually distort, not just break up, but distort. So you're going to hear it as I bring it up here. Here we go. Clean, and there's the breakup right there, which is about noon. So that feels a little lifeless to me. So I want to go just a little further than that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start chugging. start to hear it for lack of a better term kind of woof out it's going to in the low end and you don't want that because that's where the bass is going to sit that's where the kick is going to sit especially in recorded tones you want your guitar to fill up space above that not below that the bass is doing so much work in making those mixes sound really huge i don't want to play in their territory for lack of a better term so let me show you what too much sounds like here this is where i'm at this is where i'm at right now so let me turn the gain up this is at three o'clock. Can you hear how the bass just kind of go and it's just like, it's like puking almost. You can't do that. That's not gonna do really, really good for those kind of sounds. So what you're gonna wanna do is bring the gain back. Right now I have mine just below one o'clock. It's definitely breaking up. There's some distortion there, really good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Bondi sick as overdrive and I have it set up like this. And it's cutting a bunch of low end, adding some treble, some articulation, and it's going to be adding some gain without making that woofiness. So here's where I am now. As you can hear, there's a ton of articulation, a ton of really, really great harmonics there, and that's what you're really looking for. You're looking to unmuddy the low end so that you're not playing in the bass and kick territory, but it's still aggressive, it's hard hitting, it's punching, and that's really, really good. You're looking to really kind of stay in your lane, for lack of a better term, uh, with, with these kind of tones, because all that articulation, all of that high end is coming from not having a ton of muddy low end and not a ton of like really gross, uh, harmonics below like two, 300 hertz where you're just getting a bunch of low mid and low end mud. Another big part of this sound is making sure that you have your EQ set in a way that is conducive to uh, the mix, whether that's live or in a recording. I record a lot, obviously, but the way I have my amp set up right now is pretty mid heavy. And that's a really big deal. 
you scoop your mids up a bunch, which isn't a bad sound sometimes and can be useful, especially on certain amps. But for this particular sound, the mids is where you're getting all that articulation from, all that note definition. And that's a really uh, huge part of this kind of new modern pop punk sound. One of the other really super important things when you're kind of thinking about doing this kind of a sound or you're wanting to use it for a record or live is your cabinet choice. I think a lot of people overlook that. And uh, right now I'm using a Mesa Vintage 30 uh, oversized kind of rectifier type cab in the two notes. And what you're looking for is that thump in the bass. That's really, really good and you want that. Uh, I know I was just talking about how all that low end can get muddy and gross and you don't want it. But in this particular cabinet, you're looking for that thump because you're getting the palm mutes to sound thick and chunky even though there's not a lot of low end. <laughs> And that's what you want, and I think the cabinet choice is a huge part of that. I prefer Vintage 30s, some guys really like Greenbacks. Um, there's other speaker choices out there, this is just what I personally use to get my tone. So if I had to kind of run down things that are really important uh, for this kind of sound would be, one, make sure you're using uh, some sort of low-end cut overdrive, whether that's a Tube Screamer, a Klon, a 1981 DRV, any of that kind of stuff where you're cutting low and below like 300 hertz. It's a huge part of getting really articulate, really note-defined sounds. Two, I think that the amp is a big part of it, but you can do this without with almost any amp that has some gain structure to it. Uh, anything that has enough gain for pop punk is capable of doing pop punk, if that makes sense. So it's all about setting your, your gain and your EQ in, in a way that is conducive to the sound you're going for. And in this case, I really think that a lot of mids help, a, a little bit of low end cut, and setting the gain to a place that feels good, but isn't too much. And I think that's something that as a guitar player, you're gonna have to, you, you, you kind of learn as you go along, you know. For me, I kind of take the gain to where I think it feels really, really good, and I back it off like a tenth. Like just enough that it is still comfortable, but I don't want it to be muddy and gross. Lastly, I'd say that the cabinet is a huge, huge part. Make sure you're using a cabinet that has a good amount of low end. I prefer 4x12s for this kind of sound. And just make sure that you're using speakers that sound good to you. And this is all about how you want to portray it. but. Lastly, a snapback, super important, gotta have it. If you don't have a backward snapback, are you even pop punking? Now clearly these are my opinions, uh, and I mean I'm not the end all be all, but I'm hoping this can at least help people start to get pop punk tones in a really uh, useful way. So let's take a look at the recorded song so that you can kind of hear uh, how I use these tones in, a con in, in context. Uh, so this is the exact same setup I'm using right now. Uh, the SIG has and the, and the TH30 with this Telecaster, uh, just run it into my DAW and make it a rock song. Uh, thanks again guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I love doing these videos. Hit the subscribe button and I'll talk to y'all later.